years ago, two struggling waiters literally found a bounty in their backyard garden. Kitchen creations like roasted garlic onion jam were just the thing for the foodie trends sweeping the country back in the 1990s. The first batch was really an accident, but out of that jam, Stonewall Kitchen grew into a specialty food powerhouse. <laughs> If you think back like 20 years ago, you'd go to the grocery store and there would be like say two choices of vinegar, white and red. We were just in the beginning of that, that craze, that gourmet craze of, yeah. of these artisanal products. We weren't satisfied with making marmalade, you could get that anywhere. Mm, that's great. When they met, Jim Stott and John King were scraping by as waiters. Stott built spec houses until the market collapsed in the late 1980s. Then he built big debts. By then, John King was a disenchanted hotel manager. Their outlet, creative kitchenery. I discovered this passion for horticulture. I planted our first garden in our backyard. We made jam and mustard for friends as presents because it's all we could afford. Good stuff, though. Far from the cutting-edge kitchens of New York or San Francisco, fresh vegetables and herbs from their New Hampshire garden led to inspired dabbling with sauces, pestos, salsas, and herbal vinegars. We were introducing tarragon and herbs Provence and roasted garlic vinegar, sun-dried Sun tomato products. A friend suggested selling their stuff at a local farmer's market. They needed a name. And we looked out the window and there was a stone wall, so we called it Stonewall Kitchen. And that first day, everything sold out on our table. We made yeah. like $400. It was wonderful. And uh, it's crazy. Soon they were selling at several markets a week. Folksy handwritten labels turned heads. A good day brought in two to $3,000. Later, they branched out to county fairs, jazz festivals, even flower shows. I remember telling my parents that I was going to quit my job because I was going to make jam. They said I had gone crazy. I should see a shrink. To King, a college psychology major, it didn't seem crazy, especially after a local gourmet retailer asked about buying wholesale. They weren't even sure it was legal. She goes, well, I'll just buy everything on your table and everything in the van. Then, proud parents, we went to the store the next day to see our stuff there. She had doubled the price. That's when we knew the difference between retail and wholesale. It was all one big experiment. Stott and King weren't trained chefs, they just like to cook at home. It's like, it's like Secret here. ingredient is pepper. I make jam, I don't make soup. Doing this, I think we should be making s'mores. Ignorance was our friend, because we were able to go with our own imagination. We weren't afraid at all to take risks. Like one of the things that we made in the beginning was this coconut rum mustard. Concept sounds wonderful. Oh my God, it tastes like soap. They had much better luck with roasted garlic onion jam. Roasted garlic? Ah! That's a marriage made in heaven. I guess if you're single and you're not dating, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> it started as a batch of relish. I was cooking the batch, the, the fateful batch, and, um, and I cooked it too much. I was on the phone with my mother yapping, and I overcooked it, and it became thick. And then I added more sugar than it was supposed to take. So then when we poured it and put it in the jar, it became a jam. It was kind of solid, and we were not going to throw it away. And people loved it. That was kind of controversial, because it's a vegetable jam. Vegetables and vinegar? Is that really a jam? The judges at the 1995 Fancy Food Show in New York City loved it, too, picking it as the outstanding preserve. They've been winning ever since. At the 2011 show in Washington, D.C., their roasted peach whiskey sauce was their 27th award winner since 1995. It all happened by chance. We were standing there with uh, suits and ties. Really, you know, it's like we fell off the turnip truck, but we really hit that year. Why? Because Stonewall Kitchen was the surprise winner of the show's top award back in 1995. Outstanding product line, as in best in show. It's like winning the... It's like the best picture. The best picture. And, and that just, like, validated everything that we had worked for the last five years. Suddenly, they were turning down orders. Their first big one came from Crate and Barrel, 5,000 jars of orange cranberry marmalade. At the time, a typical handcrafted batch was about 38 jars. We almost fainted. 
After a month of cooking marmalade and writing out labels, the phone rang. They oh. said that it, the, the word marmalade was misspelled, it was missing the R, and I said, oh, well, that's how we say it in Maine. And they said, we love it, that is brilliant, marmalade. The spelling's been fixed, and their celebrity status confirmed after mixing it up with the likes of Martha Stewart and Ina Garten. Their plant in southern Maine can make 5,000 jars in a couple of hours. But they say building the plant was the biggest risk they've ever taken. Building costs were estimated at $8 million in the late 1990s. At the time, that equaled a full year of sales. We went way over budget on the building. Um, it was really scary. It was the only time in the 20 years of business that we had felt that kind of financial stress in our lives that, uh-oh, we may have taken on more than we can swallow. It's paid off, though. In a single day, they'll make 50,000 jars of jams and the like, and another 25 to 30,000 in bottles of dressing and sauces. In 2011, sales will set a new record. We're gonna break 50 million this year. We have a really strong financial plan to grow the company in the next five years to break 100 million. That's really exciting stuff. For two guys that went on a Saturday morning and tried to make a little extra pin money, I mean, <laughs> it's unheard of. Stonewall Kitchen's 46,000 square foot headquarters in York, Maine, is home to one of their nine stores, a cafe and a cooking school in addition to the plant, prepping goodies headed to more than 45 countries. About a half million folks visit Stonewall every year, making it one of Maine's biggest tourist attractions.